All right, so a bunch of you all have asked how I color my videos, and today I'm gonna show you. I am by no means a professional colorist, but over the last couple years, I've been learning how to use DaVinci Resolve to color my footage and doing what we all do, which is watch a lot of YouTube and figure it out. I'm able to get an image most of the time that I'm pretty happy with. I'm still learning, but I'll show you how I do it. All right, so as you can see, I've thrown a couple clips into my timeline in DaVinci. Uh, from a couple different cameras and before I dive over to the color page I'm going to check out this color management tab in my project settings and What I want to make sure is that the color science is set to DaVinci YRGB The timeline color space is DaVinci wide gamut intermediate and my output color space is rec 709-a if you're somebody that is making a video for YouTube or online purposes, you're most likely going to want this Rec. 709A output color space. Once that's done, I save it and I head over to the color page. If you're anything like me, the first time you open the color page here in DaVinci Resolve, you're going to be extremely intimidated by everything they have going on in here. There are so many tools, there's so many ways to get lost or confused in here, uh, but just learn these tools one at a time and before you know it, you'll, uh, you'll know your way around. So when I color the first clip of a project, the first thing I'm gonna do is set the look that all the rest of my clips in the project are gonna have applied to it, as well as set a template node tree that's gonna give me a really quick starting point to grade all of my footage. So with my first clip here, I'm going to hit option S twice and create two nodes. And I'm going to label the first node CST in and my second node CST out. And then I'm gonna to go to my effects tab here and I'm going to find the color space transform. If it doesn't pop up for you right away, just search it and find it and I'm just gonna simply drag and drop this effect on both of these nodes. Most of the clips I'll be color grading today are shot in a log format. As you can see here, it's all flat, but I have included one clip at the end that is in a Rec. 709 color space. So if you film your footage in a Rec. 709 color space, I'll show you at the end of this video how I would deal with one of those clips specifically, but everything I'm gonna show you up until that point is also relevant for Rec. 709 footage. So now that I have my CST in and my CST out, I'm gonna to go to my CST in open back the effects tab here, and I'm gonna input the information of this camera. So I know that this was shot on a Sony FX3 in S-Log3 Cine Gamut, so I'm gonna input that color space. So right here, I'm gonna click down this tab, and I'm gonna find the Sony S-Gamut3 Cine, and then the gamma is S-Log3. And my output color space, I'm going to set to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and DaVinci Intermediate. On the second node, I'm going to then put DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And my output color space is gonna be Rec. 709. And my output gamma is gonna be Rec. 709-A. So as you can see, I've taken our log footage and I've transformed it into a Rec. 709 color space. As you can see, it's gone from flat, no contrast, no color, and I've now entered in that contrast and color. I'm going to take my second node here, I'm gonna drag it to the end, and I'm gonna create a node after this node by hitting Option S. And I'm gonna label this node Look. So on this node here, I'm gonna be adding a LUT to create the base look for our project. There are a lot of LUTs out there, and before you go spending your money on some fancy LUT, make sure you know what the LUT you are buying was created for. Not all LUTs are created equal, and not all of them are meant to be used the same way. What I mean by this is if I go into my LUTs tab here, DaVinci has a bunch of LUTs that they give you with the software, and I have also have a bunch of LUTs that I've purchased myself over the years but the LUTs I'm gonna be using today are these LUTs from Colors Foundry that I purchased a couple years ago. And as you can see on this folder here, it says Film Negative Color Emulation LUTs. 
and it says Rec 709 at the end. Now what that means is these LUTs have all been created to be applied to an image in a Rec 709 color space. So my CST out here has transferred the footage from DaVinci Wide Gamut into Rec 709. So that is why this look node has been created after the CST out. So I can apply a Rec 709 LUT to this look node because it is in that color space. So now that I'm in my folder of LUTs, I can simply just find a LUT I like. So I'm gonna try this Kodak Vision 250D5246. And I'm gonna drag and drop that on my node here. And I'm not really liking that one. So I'm gonna reset that. I'm gonna go back into my LUTs and I'm gonna try this 200T Kodak. It's a little warm for my liking. What about this one? Cool, I like this one. It warms it up just a, just a hair, nothing too crazy, but I'm liking the way that's looking. So what we've done now is we've taken our image from S-Log3, we've converted it to Vinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, which is a nice color space to work within. And I've then taken my DaVinci Wide Gamut color space, converted it to Rec. 709, and then I've applied a look to my Rec. 709 footage. And I can go on to building the rest of my template node tree. So I'm gonna go back to my first node, CSTN. I'm gonna create a new node and I'm going to label it Exposure. I'm gonna create another node after that. Call it Balance. Another one after that, option S, call it contrast. After my contrast node, I'm gonna create one more and then I'm immediately gonna hit option P three more times and I've done what's called create a parallel node. And I'm gonna label these highlights Shadows. Tint. And saturation. So this is my template node tree, and this is essentially what I'm going to use as the starting point for the rest of my clips moving forward. So to save this, I'm just gonna go over to my image. I'm gonna right click and hit grab still. And then I can go over to my gallery here and I can see I have it saved. So now I'm just gonna begin adjusting these clips in the nodes that I have pre-made. So for my second node here after my CST in, I'm gonna adjust the exposure and I like to do that in the HDR color wheels under the global setting. And I'm gonna do that by uh, bringing up the exposure a little bit. Now it's always important to kind of see what you've done. So I'm gonna click this node and then I have a quick command set to the D key so I can see the adjustment I've made. That's the adjustment I've made off and that is the adjustment I have made with it on. So I'm liking that. I'm gonna to go to the balance node and I think I wanna warm up all of this footage. So again, in my HDR color wheels in the global setting, I'm gonna drag this little color wheel be a little warmer and again I'm gonna audition what I've done here I kind of like that warm filmy look I've added to it but I think I want to back off it just a hair all right I'm liking how that looks I'm gonna move on to contrast now you can adjust your contrast a bunch of different ways you can do it here in the primary color wheels under the contrast slider right here. But what I like to do is actually pull contrast using the curves here. And I'm gonna use this eyedropper tool and I'm gonna make a point here on this tree. And then I'm gonna make a point here on the back of my jacket. And then I might make another point here on this really bright part of the tree. I'm gonna go over to that first point. I'm gonna dip this down a bit. I'm gonna go to the middle point here and adjust that as well. And I'm just gonna make little moves until I'm happy with the contrast of this image. 
All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna audition that on and off. So I've added a healthy amount of contrast to the image here. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go to my highlights node here and I'm gonna go back to my HDR color wheels and I'm gonna go to the light wheel and I'm gonna see what it looks like if I just bring down a little bit of that, the highlights there. I like what that's doing. I don't think I need to adjust anything in my shadows. I'm liking where those are at. So I'm gonna move over to the tint node I've pre-created and I'm gonna to go to the shadows and I think I want my shadows to be a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna to go to the shadow wheel here in my HDR color wheels and I'm gonna move that ever so slightly into the blue area. So that's with it off and that's with the adjustment I've made on. And I like how that's just cooled the darker points of my image. Now, as far as saturation, I don't think I need to do anything. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. So we've gone from this to this. All right, so now when I move on to my second clip, I don't have to do all of that heavy lifting I did before. I can hop over to my gallery here and I can apply the grade that I used on my last clip. And immediately I've given myself a really, really good starting point. This footage, like the clip before it, was shot on the FX3 and S-Log3. So the color space transforms are doing exactly what I want them to do. And the look I've applied is also looking pretty good on this clip. And if you want everything to look really uniform, you use the same look throughout your project. So I'm gonna scrub this frame until I find a spot that I like and wanna grade from. And I'm just gonna go through my process once again. And boom, there you have it, another clip done. Move back over to the next clip. And again, we have another clip that was shot on the FX3. And once again, same process. All right, let's move on to the next clip. This clip, when I apply my grade to it, that's looking pretty funky. And there's a reason for that. And that reason is this was not shot with a Sony FX3. This was shot with a DJI drone. It's a drone shot of a pretty mountain here in Washington. So instead of being Sony S Gamut 3, I'm simply going to change this to DJI D Gamut and D Log and that is now gonna be doing things correctly. So instead of taking this footage from S-Log, which it isn't, it's gonna be taking it in from D-Log into DaVinci Wide Gamut. So these CSTs are now working correctly. Now, before I move on and grade this clip, I'm gonna save this by grabbing a still. I'm gonna go back over to my gallery and I'm gonna label this D-Log. And I'm gonna label my first grade S-Log. So now I have preset node templates with my look applied for S-Log footage and D-Log footage. So once that's done, I can go into my template node tree and begin coloring as I've done with all the previous clips. But one thing I can tell with this clip already is that this look is a little bit too strong. I, I like it, but the blues are just a bit too much for me. So what I can do is I can go to my look node here and I can click the key and go to my key output and this is gonna reduce the effect that this node is having on the footage. So if I just slide that back, it's around 50.53 there. So you can see it's not as punchy anymore. And I like the way that looks. The look is still there. It's just not being applied as strong. Now my next clip is once again, another drone clip, which is nice because we can just apply this grade that we've saved and we're once again in a good starting point.
Great, I'm liking how that one looks. And now let's move on to my final clip here. And as promised, this clip, as you can see right away, was shot in Rec. 709. So this is not a log color space. So when I go over to my template node tree, let's take the D log node tree here and I apply this grade, it looks terrible. And there's a really, really easy way we can fix this. We go to our CST in, we delete it, we go to our CST out and delete that. Now this works because the look I have created is using a LUT that was made for Rec. 709. So this LUT was made for Rec. 709. So when I apply it to this footage, it works. So if you're somebody that is using a camera that can only shoot in a Rec. 709 color space and you want to buy LUTs to help your footage and help you create a look to your footage, make sure you buy one that is for a Rec. 709 color space. And then from there, I simply do what I've been doing to every other clip and I work myself from left to right on my node tree. Find a nice hero frame here. I like this one with that cool lens flare. And I'm going to bump up the exposure a bit. It's important to remember if you're grading Rec. 709 footage that you're not gonna have near the amount of flexibility and dynamic range as you would if you have a camera that shoots in log but that's okay, you can, still, you can still work with it. As you can see, I'm warming things up a bit here. It's kind of fun. I'm gonna add some contrast. Again, I'm gonna use the, the custom curve here. Great, I'm liking how that looks. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cool off these shadows once again. So you can see that's with it off and that's with it on. And voila, I've taken a Rec. 709 clip from this to this. So there it is, that's how I color my videos. Nothing too crazy, nothing too complicated. I figured out a system that works for me and gets me an image that I'm pretty happy with and I'm continuing to learn. I certainly recommend if you're somebody that's into this, don't be intimidated, dive right in, start messing with it. And like I said earlier, if you're gonna buy a lot, make sure you know what you're buying before you buy it and make sure that whatever you're buying is going to work with the footage that you are going to be using. Thanks for watching. Definitely let me know in the comments what you wanna see next and I'll catch you later.